Hello and welcome to my channel. Today we're going to be talking about Lisa Altamari Wallace. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. Um, she's been missing since 2012, October 27th. It says she's missing from Eufaula, Alabama. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. In the South, sometimes we add R's to cities that don't even have the letter R in them, so you never know. Um, it says she was five foot two to five foot five, 145 pounds. I guess they were guesstimating. Um, it said she was suffering from a brain tumor at the time of her disappearance that often caused her pain. It's unknown whether the tumor was benign or cancerous. She had had surgery for the tumor, and she was scheduled for a second surgery in December. Um, in spite of her medical condition, however, they said that her mind was not affected and that she was behaving normally. Um, she's a Caucasian female with red hair and hazel eyes. I don't know if she's a natural redhead, or, but it says pretty much, so maybe. Um, Wallace has a mole on the top of her right foot and a tattoo of a dolphin on her upper left arm. A photo of the tattoo is posted with this case summary, her ears are pierced and she has one crooked tooth that shows when she smiles. She may use the last name Emmerich or, and or Waltz and her maiden name is Altamari. So, so she was last seen in the vicinity of West Chihuahua Creek Drive in Ufala, Alabama on October 27, 2012. Her husband stated that they had an argument and at 1 p.m. he took their daughter to his mother's house and while they were gone, Wallace packed a bag and left on foot. Uh huh. She never arrived at work that day and has never been heard from again. Her mother is the one that reported her missing. Wallace and her husband had filed for divorce just days before she went missing. So, and they had a child. So I don't know who would have gotten custody of the child or how that would have went. Plus the child support and alimony. So I don't know. Wallace and her husband had filed for, for divorce just days before she went. Her loved ones believe she met with foul play. Because they don't think she would have abandoned her daughter. And her case remains unsolved. So... And I, it doesn't say which one of them filed for the divorce, so I don't know. Right there, that just sounds suspicious. Um, yeah. Lisa Wallace had a brain tumor when she went missing. And this is a website. It says she was born September 25th, 1977 to Barbara Covey. Lisa worked at a restaurant at Gulf Shore. She was a victim of domestic violence at the hands of her alcoholic husband, Chris Wallace. Then Lisa was diagnosed with a brain tumor and Chris convinced Lisa to move with him to Eufaula to be closer to the University of Alabama Birmingham Medical Center. Before Lisa left, she gave her best friend, Libby Caldwell, a letter saying that any, if anything happens to her, call the police and look at Chris first. In 2011, uh, Lisa gave birth to a daughter who she named. Lisa was overjoyed, thinking her cancer made children impossible. Uh, she wanted to set a better example and not let her daughter grow up thinking domestic violence was okay. So she decided to file for a divorce. So on October 27, 2012, um, according to Chris, they had an argument. That's when they had it. So with 35-year-old Lisa at their house located just past the KOA campground in North Ufala, at 1 p.m. he took their daughter to his mother's house and while they were gone, he said that she packed a bag and left. She never arrived for work for the lunch shift at the River City Barbecue that day. And she's never been heard from again. And her mother reported her missing. Lisa's family doesn't believe that she would leave her little girl. Neither did the police. And they named Chris as a person of interest in her disappearance. A few days after her disappearance, um, the man she worked for, Bill Burr, received a text message from her asking for additional money. Thousands. Multiple employees that worked with Lisa believe that this was related to a large drug transaction that she and her marriage manager, Gary McLeod, were involved in. Burr reportedly did not reply. Multiple witnesses saw and read the text, and when two Ufala police officers entered the River City Grill after a missing persons report was filed, he showed it to them. But I wonder if somebody else had her phone. At the time, there was a couple who saw 
who they thought was Lisa walking down the road, leaving her house past the campground at around noon, but were reluctant to get involved as they thought her disappearance was drug-related. Two weeks after Lisa went missing, cadaver dogs picked up her scent beside the road in the area where she was seen walking in front of the KO campground. The, stamps, the scent stops at a small turnaround spot. Private investigator Kathy Johnston was hired by Lisa's parents. Johnston claimed that the police ignored evidence in the case. She said that a bloody mattress found by another private investigator in the woods off Highway 95 wasn't tested by police for Lisa's DNA. In February of last year, Chris was pulled over by a police officer in a Dollar General parking lot as a potential suspect in a local pharmacy robbery. Chris reportedly shot the officer before he and a female companion drove off. off. Law, enforcement, law enforcement tracked the two to an apartment complex on Stonegate Drive. Chris killed his companion and then himself before a fire broke out in the apartment. At the time of her disappearance, Lisa was between 5'2 and 5'5 and 145 pounds with red hair, hazel eyes. Wallace had a mole on the top of her right foot and a tattoo of a dolphin on her upper left arm. Her ears were pierced and she had one crooked tooth that showed when she smiled. Lisa was due to have her tumor removed December of the year that she went missing. If you have information, no matter how small, even if you think it's insignificant, it doesn't mean that it is. And you can remain anonymous, but it says you need to contact the Ufala Police Department and let them know Lisa's daughter is missing her mother. Lisa used to call and text her mother, Barbara Covey, every day, and now there's just silence. So, yeah, that's just so sad. The whole thing, anytime, any, anytime something like that happens, it's just very, very sad. And... So, and it's not looking too good, but hopefully she's alive somewhere, but it doesn't look good. Lisa Altamari Wallace, and this is a Facebook page, and so people are missing her, and they love her. So if you have any information about this woman or anybody involved, even if you don't feel like it's important or significant, you know, you can contact them and let them know because her case hasn't been solved. She's not been found. They don't know what happened to her for sure, you know, and, and that's got to be hard on the family. So, you know, get it, what it helped to have for them to have closure, you know, can you imagine not having the closure of not knowing what happened? So, and this has been going on for years. So it's very sad. And there's friends that have missed her and love her and they don't know what happened. So if you have any information, you should contact the law enforcement and just let them know, no matter how insignificant you feel that it is. Anyway, I'm just a small YouTube channel and I appreciate my viewers. So I just want to say thank you so much for watching my video and um, prayers for their loved ones and their family. And so don't forget to pray for them all. And thank you so much for tuning in to my channel. Have a great day. Bye-bye.